Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree and today we have a really cool show for y'all. It is our sixth installment of the cooking class and we got some really cool things for y'all this week. We're doing club sandwich salad, pickled red onions, we're doing some wine tasting and pairing, pork chop stuff two different ways, we're doing cornbread dressing, corn mock choux, and pecan pie. So y'all hang on, Cajun Living and Cooking's fixing to start right about now. Tide line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. Sitting on a pipeline Waiting for the sun to shine Snap beans, red beans Cornbread, mustard greens That's how we live And it sure feels fine Hey everybody, my name's Rodney Dupree And this is... I'm Holly And we've been having a blast doing this, Holly Yeah And um, sure. we've been doing some neat things Some different foods And talking about some cool foods But uh... I'm really looking forward today to that pecan pie that you made. Yeah, it that, ought to be good. Mm -hmm. Well, what you liking today? I'm looking forward to this salad. This is a very unique salad. I'm looking forward to this. It, it is, it is. But before we go any further, we want to talk about our sponsors, y'all. Let's talk about DS Tire. Very good sponsors. Um, proud to have them on board. Leaders Fried Chicken. Great people. We had their chicken a couple weeks ago, and that was really good, and that coleslaw, too. And uh, Capital City Produce for bringing in the produce. Well, uh, talk to Taft, talk to Mike and them, they'll fix you up. So, let's move on to what we're cooking. Yeah. And today is the club sandwich salad. And I think they call it club salad or club sandwich salad. So, um, I'm going to tell the folks what we have in here as you start decorating some of the things on here. Okay. It's a cool uh, little recipe we picked up. So, you don't have to, they don't really tell what you uh, how many of each thing in it but I'm gonna tell you and then you add what you'd like in it so it's a uh, romaine lettuce and I've added some uh, butter lettuce and some iceberg lettuce that I cut up in there we have some cherry tomatoes cut up bacon we have avocado that's chopped and I don't think you can go wrong with however much bacon you put on it. Uh, so yeah, you can right. probably take about 47 pounds and fry it, chop it up, and put it in there and call bacon club salad. And chicken, well, what we have here, this is a chicken breast and a little piece of another chicken breast. And uh, it says shredded or chopped. And then the dressing's really cool, y'all. It is mayonnaise half mayonnaise half mustard and a splash of vinegar and we have croutons and hard-boiled egg so what you do is put these on here add them out here and you put as much dressing as you want on it so i know everybody out there has had a club sandwich before but this I know, is but this uh, is just so unique i think it would be great if you had friends over with this it's um healthy this yeah. is summertime right here yeah straight summer and it's just pretty now while you nice. decorate these I, I i go to places and find some of the bowls and cool things we use with our um at, at the thrift stores mm -hmm. and i found this little thing right here and i i noticed this, i think it's like a 1961 which really does some cool stuff i've been playing with this cucumber with it we didn't use it in here but we may use it eventually but anyway i put the this is one of the five different <laughs> settings you can have on there for making a salad oh, goodness. i've so never seen a machine like it that. is it's 1961 so i was like not born yet right <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna do some of these, y'all. Can you see that coming out of there? This will eat a cucumber up, and you have <laughs> you have cucumber shredded cucumbers. All you want now is, I would say, some ranch. Put some salt and pepper on there, and you just take these out, and you can add it 
and it'll shave it it'll do all kind of stuff in there it's really really cool but it's something we found at the thrift store and I want to tell you a little bit about the lettuce too um, lettuce is an annual plant of the daisy family most often used in salads although it will be seen in soups sandwiches and wraps uh, in 2017 the world production of lettuce was 27 million tons oh, that's a lot of lettuce mm -hmm. uh, lettuce is a rich source of vitamin K and vitamin A and also iron uh, it was the first cultivated crop in Egypt and that evidence appears back to 2680 BC oh. so they've been making lettuce for a long time uh, lettuce was first brought to the Americas by Christopher Columbus in the late 15th century mm -hmm. um, most common types of lettuce there's three kinds I say three kinds it's really there's three main ones leaf head and romaine and then you can add on that the butterhead the crisp head the cellulose stem cellulose stem then the all seed and the red leaf and i think everybody's ate except that one i think that one's made enough in, uh, in china but um there's documentation from the late 1800s to show that um there were 65 to 100 varieties in the late 1800s now there are over a thousand one hundred different varieties. Wow. So uh, you ready to hit the old so, shake it up and put a yeah. little we'll put us a little bit on there you know and then you can add more as you go. Okay. Good old club salad. Look at that. Ah, ah. No bread so it's good for you. Yeah. Ah, ah. Well since we're doing that let's go to one more. Okay. I got another one for you. Why don't you put all that stuff on the tray and we'll do some pick pickled onions. That's a really, really cool recipe. Look at here. This is a good one, y'all. Actually, made some last night. We tested it. It's good. And it's easy to do. What you're doing is a half a cup of apple cider vinegar that you're going to pour in. You're going to take one tablespoon of sugar, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, and one red onion thinly sliced, which we've already done. So you're going to whisk these first ingredients up uh, until the salt and the sugar melt. So we're going to place the onions in a jar. I happen to have a jar right here. Let's move this and save water. the water. The water goes in the bowl too. I might have not told you that part as I was telling you. Then you stir it up. We're gonna put the onions in here. Now this is this is tough cooking right here. This is almost like this is almost like going to Burger King. It's, you can cook it that fast. Now if you can open the bag, that's another thing. <laughs> Look at here. <laughs> This is, now it says one thinly sliced red onion. Look at there. I'm going to put that many in there. We'll add some more if we need it. I'm going to let you uh, pour this in. Yeah, good pour. idea. We're going to use the funnel. That's Thanks from the studio idea. audience with the funnel. <laughs> good ah, idea. Ah, ah. So, what you want to do is pour the mixture on the onions, let it sit at room temperature for one hour, and at that point, you're good to go. But it can be made two weeks in advance, so you cover it and you chill it. And it says drain it before you use it, but depends on how much you like the, the juice in there. But how simple is that, huh? Very simple. It's, that's simple. Yeah. All right, there's a couple cool recipes for y'all. We got some really good stuff coming up and we'll see y'all in just a few minutes. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life-threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. 
dreams come true provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com The new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark located at the Port Vincent Bridge is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans-style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're, You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Holly, we got another good one going here. We got to okay. tell you a little bit about this one. Uh, Mr. Jamie and Veronica McMurray gave me this recipe. Okay. Now it's from their 81 year old mom, Miss Joyce Hawkins. Oh. She's, okay. um, she used to do it for years and years and years. And she's already, they made a plaque of it and they wrote it all down. And now for the holidays, all the daughters are going to cook it. Yeah. So that's why they all wrote it down. And uh, let me tell you what's in it. And we went a few steps ahead of y'all. We've actually made our cornbread already. And you can see our recipe from uh, last week or week, I think week five. And we also browned the ground meat already. So we done got ahead of the game on this one. So all we have in there now is a little tiny bit of vegetable oil to get that going. Mm -hmm. Holly's gonna get some salt and pepper on there because they don't come from the store with seasoning on them. But what's in there is, it's a whole celery, almost a whole celery, three large onions, two bunches of green onions and a bunch of parsley. And the flavor, the smell in here of that flavor is just... I love it, yeah. It's done lit the place up. Yeah, I love it. Now, um, this makes a lot. So what it does is uh, you make a big cornbread and you crumble the cornbread and it makes two. So we've already got cornbread. I'm gonna add since I got some good clean gloves on. Yeah. Some cornbread in here. So you end up with two big pans of this. Yeah, it makes a lot. And uh, when you taste it, you're gonna be glad you made a lot. I know, <laughs> I hear you. That looks almost even. That's almost even. And while you're smothering that down, did, um, you didn't get to taste the pork chop we made earlier. Okay. You're gonna have to try that. Yeah, let me give it a try. And uh, I had a few little pork chop tidbits for you. Pork is the most commonly consumed meat in the whole world. The most common. There are, they, they're great for roasting, grilling, frying, and even stuffing like we did. Mm -hmm. How's that flavor going? Yeah, 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 all right. You can have boneless or bone-in pork chop. Um, usually cut between a half inch to two inch. Now the ones we have were a little over one inch, I'd say, almost two. You get any bigger than that. No. They were uh, thick. Yeah, that's pretty thick. Um, now I'm, I got something really cool for you. The, imbru the improved breeding techniques have made it possible to cook pork now to a lower temperature. Um, it, it helps remain, it helps keep it juicy. And it also is safe to eat. The U.S. government guidelines recommend that you cook pork to 145. Okay. I think way back we used to go to 180 or something from what I was seeing. Yeah, they were always so concerned it was going to hurt you. Yeah. It wasn't cooked enough, yeah. So, 
I'll tell you what we'll do, Holly. Tell you what. Instead of everybody sitting here watching us just smother down some onions, because how long can you do it? Because that's a pile of onions we yes. got there. It's going to take a minute. Mm -hmm. So we're going to smother that down. We're going to end up bringing some cornbread that we already have. We're going to end up putting this together, and y'all hang on. It's going to get better. Okay, Holly. We got another good one going. But first, the cornbread to come up. Look at that, huh? Then made a little crust on the end. It looks good. And um, I'm hoping they'll be able to serve those for years and years in that family, on the McMurray family. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Okay, we're moving into the corn mock shoot. Okay, now we got uh, we got started before y'all started looking. So what we got here is onions and bell peppers okay so we're smothering that down we sauteing onions and bell peppers in a little oil for about five minutes or so and i think we've reached that now so mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and add the tomatoes and we're going to cook them for about 10 minutes adding the garlic at the last few minutes of cooking okay. well that sizzled up pretty good right there yeah sure. and i, I want to tell you corn mock shoe is a traditional dish of Louisiana. It is thought to be a mix of Creole and American Indian cultural influence. Uh, the name is likely derived from the French interpretation of the Native American name. So you would picture in the spring, middle spring, when the corn comes in and tomatoes comes in and I guess that's when this was probably first cooked now uh, I'm sure back then that they cooked they did the corn again in the fall so I think that's where uh, I'm sure they'd probably do it twice a year is what I'm thinking so um, once you cook them for a few minutes the next thing you're gonna be doing is adding some corn and that's when you put some salt and pepper in there and you you're gonna cook that corn till it's about tender 10 to 15 minutes and if, the, if you need a little more liquid, you can. Sometimes it cooks out, sometimes it don't. The trouble we had with this one, and not that we had much trouble, because um, we've really been testing it already. Mm -hmm. Fresh corn. I, I went to every store from here to Tupelo, Mississippi. Oh my word. And there was no fresh corn. So we didn't have fresh corn. We got, Mr. Del Monte had some in a can. Okay. And that's what we used. Okay. Thank God for him. And it's a long ride to Tupelo, Mississippi, I want to oh. say. But anyway, once we start cutting this, getting this all together, um, I'm going to say um, a few minutes, but i tell you what I got, Holly. And you know I'm always got some good tips for you. If I can find them. You heard of old wives' tales? Yes. We always called it old wives' tales. I didn't even know it was wives' tales. It was wives' tales. I guess the ladies sit around back in the day because they didn't have TV and just told stories, maybe. But some of these, some of these wives' tales I remember, um, like uh, cracking your knuckles will make you have arthritis. Not true. Not true. I think mom didn't like you cracking your knuckles. It made her mad, so that's why she told you that. Okay. Sitting too close to the TV will damage your eyesight. Not, Not true. true. Not oh, true at all. Okay. <laughs> Swallowing a watermelon seed will make a watermelon grow in your belly. I know y'all have heard of that before. That's yeah. hilarious. Uh, swallowing gum, it'll stay in your belly for seven years. Oh, my. Not true. The gum has nothing to do with your digestive system. Yeah. It'll just come out the same way you had it earlier. Um, after eating, you have to wait for 30 minutes to go swimming. Not true. Not true at all. Okay. If you cross your eyes for too long, they'll stay there. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I know you've heard that one too. Yeah. Uh, uh. I've heard all of these. Uh, that's hilarious. But we don't remember them until somebody goes find them. Bulls hate the color red. It's not true? No, mammals are colorblind. Oh, they can't yeah. tell colors at all. So they yeah. just, you waving or something, they come and chase you down. Right, okay. Coffee stunts your growth. <laughs> I think that's because mom and pop didn't want the kids drinking all their doggone coffee. Okay. Well, I know people who would be very small. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't drink that much coffee, yeah. Uh. <laughs> don't go outside with wet hair. Oh, 
Okay. It said you'll get sick, you know, but you, you get sick from a virus. A wet hair is not going to give you a virus to make you sick. Okay. Okay, and I got one more for you. And this is one, I, as I looked up, I couldn't find it nowhere, but I remember it. I must have been about seven or eight, but little kid, you know, back in the day, we didn't wear shirts or nothing. But my grandma told me if I unscrewed my belly button, my legs would fall off. And I believed it, too. I wasn't doing oh that, you know. I not heard that before. <laughs> Should have met my grandma. Okay. <laughs> okay, y'all. We got this mother down. We're going to put yeah. some corn in it. We're going to put everything together. And we're going to taste some. So y'all hang on. We're getting to something good. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV. Pool tables. Golf darts and the new boat launch bar ladies night on wednesdays thursdays is open mic night karaoke on fridays with dj rocky live bands on saturday and sundays the giant river bar is air conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your christmas parties come out and enjoy a good time on the river crawfish season is coming soon it's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. Porsche's Sausage, located in French Settlement, is bringing back that old country smokehouse flavor and customer service. This third generation family, dating back to 1946, has all your favorites. Hall cracklings, beef jerky, head cheese, and smoked sausage. Like the old days of Donald Porsche, our on-site butcher has all your specialties. Smoked tasso and hocks, Undewy, meat sticks, and Uncle D's Bayou Blend. Come and experience Porsche's sausage. It's a wonderful thing. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all. We're getting down to the good stuff right here. Um, Holly, oh, you tasting that cornbread dressing? Very good. Oh, it's so good. There's, there's so many flavors in there. From the the original recipe needed turkey, but I took a deboned chicken. And that's what I use instead of turkey and all the other stuff to just make you happy, 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 like they it's, say. It's so good, <laughs> yeah. Now, this recipe is a friend of ours, but I'm going to tell you about the recipe once she gets started putting things together. So, we have three whole eggs, three tablespoons of melted butter, three tablespoons of flour, quarter teaspoon of vanilla, a teaspoon of salt, half cup of sugar, one and a half cups of dark corn syrup, and I think that's what makes this, one and a half cup of broken pecan halves, and one unbaked pie with the crust. That's mm. store-bought. Yes, you can see it's store-bought. Gotcha. Okay, while you're putting all this together, then you can go ahead and go to town with it. And let me tell about the pie, and then you tell about... Um, the ingredients. Yes. Um, this comes from Derek at DS Tar, and uh, this comes from his great grandmother who is from Georgia, and uh, he said he's been eating this pie all his life. So um, it was a secret recipe. Well, it's not now, but her name was Marjorie Brooks Coburn Gallup, and she was from Georgia, and. Uh, we really want to thank her for this recipe and I also want to thank our sponsors y'all for, for helping out with the cooking class of uh, ds tar thank you leaders fried chicken thank y'all go go get some chicken and capital city produce for the produce we've been getting 
Okay, tell us a little bit about what you... All right, so, so it started with three whole eggs and then we added um, three tablespoons of melted butter and then we added three tablespoons of flour, a fourth of a teaspoon of vanilla, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, a half cup of sugar, and then the last thing we add to it is a cup and a half of dark syrup. And so I'm not measuring it because I made this pie yesterday. And so I know about how much we need. You're gonna use, it's a cup and a half, but okay. um, use a cup and a half. I think they make three different colors of the syrup, a they, dark. They definitely make a light and a dark. Um, For sure too. Yeah. I'm not sure about any other um, shade, but I definitely know they make light and dark. So you mix in a cup and a half of this syrup, and then when it's mixed really good, then you come back and you, you're you gonna break up some pecans. They, were, they came in halves, and then I broke them up and put them on the bottom of the unbaked shell. So you, you start with them there, and I guess they float up? Or? They do float up. They definitely float up, and so um, we're going to pour this mixture as soon as it's... So once you pour that in there, uh, I'm, I'm seeing uh, you bake at 425 for 10 minutes? Yes. And then you bake again? You reduce the heat, and then you cook it for 60 more minutes. Wow. So it's a long time. You're cooking it for a long time. So usually this is holiday stuff and it's cold outside. So you can keep the house warm with having the oven on for about 70 minutes. And it smelled so good. I mean, it was like Thanksgiving smell almost <laughs> to me. So. Well, since you made one yesterday, we happen to have one right here. Look at that, y'all. That, um, they're already oohing and on out there on this one. I know, I know. This so. is good. That's that's really uh, that that reminds me of good old holidays. And some of the stuff stuff we had today is a little bit of holiday. We had yeah. some stuffed pork chops. We had some mock shoe, um, a good old salad. Um, it's been a good time. I had a good time today. Yeah, it was very good. I'm gonna tell y'all what. Thanks for watching Cajun Living and Cooking, and we'll see you next week. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life-threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information, dctofla.com.